Hello everyone, I am the Meditator Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews under the deck text. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a commander from Streets of New Capenna, Falco Spara Pact Weaver. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description, it'll really help out the channel. The best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. For just $1, patrons get early access to certain videos on YouTube. In fact, patrons got a chance to see this video earlier. You can also support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing which also helps out a lot. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Falco is a 3-3 bird demon with flying and trample for 1 generic, 1 green, 1 white, and 1 blue. Already surpassing the vanilla test, Falco has 3 relevant abilities. When he enters the battlefield, he gets a shield counter, making him temporarily indestructible. You can also look at the top card of your library. Why do these go together? Because his third ability allows you to play cards from the top of your library by removing a counter from a creature you control in addition to its other cost. This means that unless you're stuck behind lands, you can potentially play any cards from the top of your library as often as you can pay for them, assuming you have the counters, giving us the potential to storm off and win the game out of nowhere. Before I explain how the deck storms off, first let's go over how to make the most out of Falco in order to dig through our library to find those combo pieces. Foreboding Statue, Mikaeus the Lunark, Phantom Nantuko, and Serrated Biskelion are creatures that tap down to give themselves a counter. With Falco on the battlefield, this essentially translates to tap to cast the first card off of your library. These cards are also good on their own with the statue being a mana dork that can transform into Forsaken Thresher of 5-5 with no keywords. However, that'll almost never happen since we're removing the counters from it and it's better used as a mana dork anyways. Mikaeus can also put a plus one plus one counter on all of our other creatures, giving us even more gas for Falco, which is amazing. Phantom Nantuko is a great blocker in a pinch since it essentially takes no damage at the cost of losing a plus one plus one counter. Serrated Biskelion can snipe mana dorks and potentially kill off other large creatures in grind your games. Forgotten Ancient and Mana Gorger Hydra don't grow on command, but they do get a ridiculous amount of plus one plus one counters in a multiplayer game like Commander. Forgotten Ancient in particular is better in storming off, even though the Hydra is better as a beater because it has trample. However, since Forgotten Ancient triggers off of our own spells too, it could potentially combo off with one of the key combos in the deck, which we'll see in a bit. Dreams of the Dead is an amazing way to put counters on our creatures with all upside. This hidden gem, which possibly many of you have never seen before, is amazing because it reanimates white creatures from the graveyard with the downside of giving it cumulative upkeep too. The creature is also exiled if it will leave the battlefield. However, the reason it's an upside in the deck isn't just because it can reanimate white creatures for just 2 mana, but because of how cumulative upkeep works. At the beginning of our upkeep, that creature gets an H counter and then we have to pay 2 mana for each time counter. However, after we pay the 2, we can just remove the counter with Falco to cast the top card of our library. So not only does it synergize with the deck, but if we wanted to keep the creature around, we just have to pay 2 mana during our upkeep. Nesting Grounds is another way to get counters on creatures, but a creature has to already have a counter. While this might seem like no net gain in counters, it is helpful to move detrimental counters from our creatures onto an opponent's creature. Plus, it's a land, so it doesn't take up a slot on the deck. Unfortunately, we might get stuck behind a land on the top of our library. Fortunately, we can exile it away with Thought Lash. Once we've assembled an engine, we can just burn through our library and exile any lands that stay on top since we won't need them if we're going to win. You can also do keep doing this until you top deck Thassa's Oracle. You can then cast it and exile all the remaining cards in your library in response to the trigger. Then you just protect it with counter magic. While this is very easily and possible with a more competitive version of this build, I don't have Thassa's Oracle in this one. I do have Thought Last though since it does help us not get clogged behind a land. So if you want to build a more competitive version of this, Thassa's Oracle is the way to go. Verse of Lord High Artificer and Sooth Saying also help us not get stuck behind a land since we can pay 5 mana to shuffle our library with either of them. Urza comes in with the added bonus of potentially casting that card for free afterwards. Sooth Saying is still amazing here, though, since we don't have to necessarily shuffle our library. We can pay X to rearrange the top X cards of our library. So good. However, while these cards are great, they're not that viable for storming off and going infinite with. They do help move the deck along, but we want to eventually combo off for the win. The deck has various outlets for the win with the multiple configurations for its engines and combos. So let's start with the creatures that can go infinite much easier with Falco, Devoted Druid and Barrington Medic. Both can untap on their own by putting a minus one minus one counter on them. Granted, unlike the Druid, the Medic doesn't generate mana. But with something like Cryptolith Rite, the Medic can tap down for mana instead of preventing damage. In any case, the deck doesn't have a lot of cards that cost one or less mana. 
However, the most important one is the other main piece of this combo, Sensei's Divining Top. So let's quickly go over how this combo works. Say we have Falco, Devoted Druid, and Sensei's Dividing Top in play. We activate the top to draw a card, top decking it. We then tap the Druid for green. We put a minus one minus one counter on it to untap it. We then remove that counter and use the mana thanks to Spara to cast the top from the top of our library. We're now back to where we started. As previously mentioned, this also works with Barons and Medic, but we'd also need Cryptolith right on the battlefield. However, this isn't the only way to go infinite. The deck is running creatures with Persist and Undying to construct other infinite engines. Young Wolf, Kitchen Finks, Garoff's Cru Mind Crusher, Glenelendra Archmage, Grazing Kelpie, Kithkin Spell Duster, and Woldfall Primus are those such creatures. With 7 of them in the deck, we have good odds at assembling this combo. Apart from Young Wolf, all of these creatures are also useful on their own, regardless if we're using them to go infinite. So they're amazing creatures to loop. For example, with Woodfall Primus, we can destroy all of their non-creature permanents. With Garoff's Mind Crusher entering the battlefield indefinitely many times, we can mill out a player. The other half of this engine is Phyrexian Altar or Ashnet's Altar. While either of these work, if you use Ashnet's Altar, you'll end up generating infinite colorless mana. As before, let's quickly see how this combo works. Suppose we have Falco, Girls, Mind Crusher, Ashnet's Altar, and Sensei's Divining Top in play. We activate the top to draw a card and top deck it. We then sacrifice the zombie to the altar generating two colorless mana. It returns with a plus one plus one counter on it. We remove the counter from it and use one colorless mana to cast the top from the top of our library. We're now back to where we started. Keep in mind that while this setup will work with any creature with Persist or Undying, this particular setup will significantly mill an opponent while also generating substantial colorless mana. With either of these combos, we can potentially draw our entire library, regardless of what's on the top, since we're technically always casting Sensei's Divining Top and not the actual top card. As previously mentioned, you can then just win with Thassa's Oracle if you wanted to. However, your storm count is going to be through the roof. So you could instead consider casting something like Astral Steel, Brain Freeze, Mind's Desire, Temporal Fissure, Aave Progenitor Ooze, Hunting Pack, and Chatterstorm. Astral Steel is great at making Falco large enough to take someone out since he has Trample. Brain Freeze is yet another way to win via milling. Temporal Fissure will clear up the entire board. Mind's Desire might seem a bit weird since our entire library will be in our hand. However, since we do, we'll undoubtedly have emergency powers in our hand. If we cast this in response to Mind's Desire on the stack, we'll shuffle our entire hand back into our library, draw 7 cards, and then cast a ton of spells for free off the top of our library. Granted, this is a bit win more, but still super fun. Emergency Powers is also good in case of emergencies. If someone will have you deck yourself in response to having your entire library in your hand, cast this in response. As for winning with the other storm cards that create creature tokens, we'll undoubtedly have a ton of them on the battlefield. Fortunately, Concordic Crossroads is getting a significant reprint in a secret layer, so you can snag one for less than a third of the original cost. For just one green mana, all creatures have haste, meaning that all of those creatures that just entered the battlefield can alpha strike the table to oblivion. Concordic Crossroads is also good on its own, since you can use it along with Cryptolith Rite to tap our creatures down the same turn they entered the battlefield, meaning that any creature with Undying or Persist can function just like Devoted Druid does if we have a free sacrifice outlet. In fact, again, I know that cards like Thassa's Oracle and Laboratory Maniac are way more straightforward for the win, but I wanted to win via a different route than that. Sensei's Dividing Top is so key to this strategy that Urza's Saga and Trinket Mage are included as ways to get it. Trophy Mage is also included since either Ashnet's Altar or Phyrexian Altar are key to the combo. That being said, you can also make this deck way more streamlined if you wanted to by adding strict tutors like Enlightened Tutor, Sylvan Tutor, Rolling Tutor, and Eldamir's Call. However, I wanted to keep the deck a bit lower in power, so I opted out of these. That being said, these three are fine enough since they are way more niche than the previously mentioned four. But you can definitely add them if you wanted to. As for interaction, you know we have to run a lot of it since it's a combo deck. We have to protect our combo against three other opponents. Fortunately, we are the best colors for that. The deck's running Safi, Eric's Daughter, and Othum, Sigardian Outcast to get back any key creature that was destroyed in response to our starting the combo or interrupting our combo in a key point of it. Either way, these cards are also great on their own since they're amazing protective pieces. As for the, protecting the combo itself, you can't go wrong with Pactum Negation, Fierce Guardianship, An Offer You Can't Refuse, Swan Song, Fluster Storm, Negate, Dobbin's Veto, Mana Drain, and Counterspell. If you are going the self mill for the win route with Thathus Oracle, then you certainly want as many counterspells as you can imagine. Not only will these help us prevent other combo players from winning themselves too, so keep that in mind. Silence and Veil of Summer, while not counterspells themselves, do help protect our turn against opponents by reducing the need for counterspells in the first place. They're also super cheap to cast, so we don't need as many resources. 
Generous Gift, Beast Within, and Endless Detour can deal with any permanent on the battlefield that can hinder us, especially tax effects that disallow us from casting more than one spell per turn or prevent us from casting spells from anywhere other than our hand. Cyclonic Rift and Evacuation help us against Swarm, Token, and Aggro decks, which is another weakness to combo decks. An Overloader Cyclonic Rift also gets rid of absolutely anything else as well, including those stacks pieces, but we do need 7 mana for that, so keep that in mind. Boseiju who endures and Otawara Soaring City don't take up slots in the deck and are excellent interaction pieces, since very few cards can interact with them since Channel is an activated ability and not a spell, but we all know how good those Channel lands are. Mystic Sanctuary is another amazing land for the deck since we're able to cast things from the top of our library. Since it can be fetched for at instant speed, we can do so in response to something to get a response on the top of our library, much to an opponent's surprise. If a Maya Cradle of Growth is included in order to be able to use those fetch lands to tap for mana as well, so we can always keep one at hand. Not just to fetch for Mystic Sanctuary at instant speed for that pro gamer move, but we can also use fetch lands to shuffle our library in a pinch. In order to draw into and cast all these spells and interaction, the deck's going to naturally need card advantage and mana acceleration. The deck's running Stroke of Genius, Drawn in Dreams, and Sphinx's Revelation, since these are the easiest to cast given that the deck is 3 color. The ones that cost X and triple blue are too restrictive since we also want to keep as much blue mana open as possible for our counter magic. Fortunately, we don't need too much card draw thanks to our commander allowing us to cast things from the top of our library. Birds of Paradise is the only mana dork in the deck since it's super cheap to cast and also relatively cheap to obtain, but you can also include Bloom Tender or Faber or Elder if you wanted to. Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Celestia Signet, Azoria Signet, and Simic Signet are included because they're easier to cast off the top of all the library for having a generic mana cost. It's only a handful of mana rocks, so it's not a big deal. Especially since you know I'm already running Farseek, Nature's Lore, and Three Visits, my favorite ramp trifecta. The deck has plenty of non-basic lands with basic land types, so you know these do some work. Speaking of, the rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. The deck's running all 9 fetch lands, all 3 shock lands, all 3 snow duels, all 3 opponent lands, Spira's Headquarters, Treva's Ruins, Command Tower, Reflecting Pool, and Ancient Tomb, as well as 2 of each basic land. As mentioned earlier, as with all of my deck techs, you can build your mana base according to your budget, whether you include more expensive cards or even cheaper cards is up to you. You do you. This view is just an idea of how to build around Falco Spara Pact Weaver. Falco definitely has CEDH potential since you're able to cast things from the top of your library, plus it's very easy to go infinite with just Falco, Devoted Druid, and Sensei's Divining Top, two cards that are already CDH stables. Since you're already drawing through your library, once you're able to protect your combo, you have to win with Thassa's Oracle if that's the route you want to go through. However, if you want something a bit lower in power, you can consider playing with other counters like I did in this particular version. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the Brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Meditor Kirby, and happy brewing.